Hi everyone, this is Dana Schuler Drummond with Grant Holster. Welcome to the iLearn Conference. Hasn't this been great? We're learning so much today and I really appreciate the GPA making this possible. Since Grant Holster is one of the sponsors, I've got this opportunity to spend a few minutes with you and uh, I'm excited to do that. Uh, now, I don't want to make it a 15 minute commercial about Grant Holster, which by the way is the first grant process management application designed for grant professionals by grant professionals. But what I really want to do is share some information that you can use today um, after the conference or maybe even during the conference if you have your email up and you're interacting with people because you've got deadlines, right? What I want to do is talk to you a little bit about the chaos of grant seeking and how to manage the chaos. I've got a couple of exciting things for you as well, so let's go ahead and get started. Creating order out of chaos. This is based on a seminar I presented at the Grant Professionals Association live conference in California a few years ago. We had a great turnout. We had a wonderful discussion. And really, this was the genesis of Grant Holster because at after the conference, I thought, why isn't there an, an application that works the way that I work? And you know what? I'm just going to create it. So I did set about to create the system that I needed. But before that existed, I did have to develop some strategies to help take some of the chaos out of the grant seeking uh, process. And that's what I want to visit with you a little bit about today. Okay, here is some really good news. I am teaming up with our friend Jess Pettit. If you attended the online conference in November, you remember Jess. She was our MC. She is brilliant and entertaining. And she and I have become really good friends since the conference. And we've decided to team up to present a webinar next week, May 12th at one o'clock central time. You'll register through the GPA. There will probably be opportunities um, to do that available all over the place. We are going to be talking about bringing order to the chaos that is grant seeking. And Jess is going to put her own unique spin on it. I'm gonna provide some perspective from a grant professional's um, point of view. Here are some things that we're gonna be talking about at that webinar next week. Our list of things to talk about are just in general, let's all commiserate about the chaotic nature of grant seeking these days. And it seems to be getting more and more chaotic. The second thing we wanna talk about is that grant seeking process, A to Z. Let's kind of just review what that's all about. Then I want to talk about some proven strategies that bring order to the chaos. These have been developed over a 30-year career and working with all kinds of different people's on, people on grants. Then let's talk about circumventing some of the chaos, really both with dealing with systems as well as dealing with people. Now, Grant Holster can help you with a lot of the systems, but it's not going to help you with the people. So I'd like to share some information on that. And this is the part where Jess is really going to shine at the webinar next week. But what I want to do now is talk a little bit about the different types of people that we have to work with. We all want to be Marlena Dietrich and we want to tell everyone to just leave us alone while we get a grant written. Give me the information that I need, respond to my questions, approve things when I send them to you and leave me alone. Let me do my job. Unfortunately, we don't work in a vacuum. We do have to work with different kinds of people. Now, I don't know about your experiences, but I know the types of people that I have to deal with on a regular day-to-day -day basis. Let me tell you about a few of them. First, we've got the program officer and these are wonderful people who are very focused on the mission of the organization. Maybe they work with your clients. Maybe they do uh, other kinds of activities. They're really good at doing their job. They don't really understand the grant seeking. They don't see the connection between the mission, the vision, the grants, the outcomes, the outputs, the logic model, and why you need to write a five page proposal about all of that. They just want the money so they can keep doing their programs. Sometimes it's a challenge to work with these folks as well wonderful as they are. The next group that I have to work with a lot, or a lot of times it's maybe the finance officer, the accountant, the COO, and they are the numbers people. They just want to um, know what's coming. They get very anxious if you surprise them with anything, and they want to know exactly what's going on at all times and what the bottom line is. The next group of people that we all have to deal with from time to time, and as somebody who comes from a development background, Believe me, I'm not casting any shade on anyone, but the divas, 
Development people tend to be the divas. They want to go have a glass of wine or they want to go on a retreat or they want to uh, cultivate uh, a new prospect and they don't really want to spend a lot of time and attention on the nitty gritty stuff, the writing, the grants that are going to get them some funding. The next category of people I work with all the time are the CEOs, the bosses, the ones who are being pulled a million different directions. They spend all day long playing whack-a-mole and we want them to approve something or give us some information and we just can't seem to get their attention. This is another group we work with a lot. Now, how do you categorize these people? How do you develop a strategy to work with them? Well. There are some things that you can do and there are some things that I've done over the years and uh, techniques that I have found that seem to work pretty well. But here's what you don't want to be and we've all been this person at some point or another. You don't want to be like Ace who just springs things on people at the last minute and says here's a bunch of things I need for my grant and it's due today so you need to drop everything and help me. Now of course there are going to be times that we ask everyone to drop everything and help us. But let's make that uh, the minority of times, shall we? Otherwise, no one's gonna answer your emails and everyone's gonna run when they see you coming down the hall. I read a book a few years ago called Non-Manipulative Selling, and it was a really good book, even though it was about sales. Um, a lot of the really good stuff in it, though, was about identifying different people. Now, we know nobody fits into just like this little um, nook. Um, of personalities but in my mind when I'm dealing with people I try to think about them in these kinds of perspectives now I will tell you that next week when Jess is with me on this presentation we're gonna be using um, you're not gonna see this we're gonna be talking about some other things and that's really the flavor that Jess is gonna bring to it is talking about different types of people and what their motivations are and how to work with them but for now we're gonna be old school and we're gonna talk about these we've got four categories the thinker the director the relator and the socializer. So I want you to think about the people that you work with and which category they tend to fall into. Now, one really good way of deciding who someone is is based on what their office looks like. The thinker probably has an office that's very spare, very little person, very few personal items. Things are very organized. They're very neat. Um, they do want um, um, order. <laughs> For everything and so if you try to spring something on them if you only give them three days notice before you need to know what the budget is um, they may not be very cooperative so the best way to deal with them is to give them a long long view give them an annual calendar give them updates let them know what's coming and what you need and uh, and when you need it and they'll be a lot easier to deal with the next person is the director and uh, their office is usually piled high with files. They usually have big desks and they have bold colors. They have big computer screens and yes, this is me, so I feel for this group. Um, they have a terrible memory, just like me. So if you pass them in the hallway and you say, by the way, I need to know about that ABC Foundation grant, and they go, absolutely, I will get that to you. They aren't lying to you. They really did intend to do it, but then they forgot. And probably because they've just got a lot on their mind. So what do you need to do with them? Well, Assume that they have forgotten what they need to do. Give them a quick list of what you need from them this week. Here are three things that I need from you by noon on Wednesday. And then come Wednesday, say, just a quick reminder, here are those three things I need from you by noon today. Um, it keeps their memory fresh and, and helps them. Keep emails short when it comes to these folks. They're not gonna read a long email. Okay, these are some of my favorite people, the relator. You walk into their office and it's very soft colors, it's very warm, it's very inviting. Lots of um, personal photos, mementos, um, just little trinkets that have a story behind them. Okay, you know these people, right? What's so great about them is that they are so good at relating to people. What's so bad about them is that sometimes they don't understand that they've got to to, uh, to really get some data to you or they've got to get information to you that it's not all about touchy-feely kinds of things. So a really good way to deal with them is to just really sit down and talk with them about the things that are going on. And if things are running late and it's causing you anxiety, 
you know, share that with them. Um, that we, to know that they have caused you anxiety is probably going to be really hard on them and they will really work to try to make you happy. So, uh, and then afterward, send them a nice little note, even if it's a sticky note saying, hey, thanks for your help yesterday, or a, an actual thank you note, or a cookie, or a balloon, or something. They really respond to these things and it's a great way to get them to help you. I've got an alarm going off probably something I need to do, but you know what? I'm a director and I forgot what it is. All right, the socializer. <laughs> Here's another one. And they're an awful lot of fun to be around, but they're really hard to nail down, especially on details. These are the people that when you walk in, um, they have that I love me wall where they have all their awards and photographs, lots of pictures of themselves in their offices. They love to talk about themselves and what they're doing. These are great people to be around. And it, and it doesn't mean that they're narcissistic or they don't think about other people. A lot of, they usually do. They're a lot of fun to be around. Very so Social, very talkative. They want to talk about big picture. They want to talk about ideas. They want to be creative. They don't want to talk about the nitty gritty. Don't talk about a logic model to them. Uh, they don't want to talk about it. They don't want to hear about it. It doesn't make sense. They want to go have lunch. So a really good strategy that I like to use with this group is to schedule something, a quick meeting with them, um, sitting across for them, from them to get the information I need and do it like at 1130 because the chances are they've already got a lunch date that they're going to want to leave and go get ready for and leave. Same thing, 430 on a Friday afternoon is a great time to go meet with these people because they've got plans at five o'clock. So they're going to really move through things that can get you the information that you need. They're probably going to be late to what Whatever their next thing is because um, they're always late but at least they'll be in a hurry to get you the information that you need now this was just a really quick and dirty overview of a little bit of what we're going to be talking about next week um, in bringing order to the chaos that is the grant seeking process so I really do hope that you will join me However, I do want to also inv invite you today to meet with me. I think there's supposed to be some sort of a little pop-up or something that's going to appear right now <laughs> that lets you schedule a meeting with me, or I think you can even drop your card or your contact information um, into our little virtual space. What that is going to do uh, is Get, you, um, get your name in the hopper for an Amazon gift card. So we're gonna be giving away a couple of those and all you have to do is give us your business card. I promise I'm not gonna drive you crazy and send you 10 emails a week or a day or a month. Um, but we do wanna just connect with you. If you've got questions, if you just wanna commiserate about those, um, those relators, <laughs> I'm more than happy to visit with you. And I look forward to talking to you and seeing you again in real life soon. So thanks so much. Bye-bye. <laughs>